What's up YouTubers, TJR Sim here, and as always I just like to wing these little reviews. And uh, here is the Simitech K2 Sim Rig that I have. Check out my other video as far as my first impressions after I got it built. Uh, but this is now in its, residing in its little home, my little corner of fun. And I uh, got it all wired up, all the transducers wired up and stuff. So. Just going to go over this rig and my impressions, my final uh, review of it. It doesn't take long to do a review on a rig. I mean, it, you know immediately whether it's good or not. And uh, now time will tell as far as how how long a, a rig will hold up to the vibrations and forces created from your, uh, you know, your wheel and transducers and stuff. Transducers can shake a rig apart after, after a while. Uh, but real quick, because I know I missed it on my, uh, when I was reviewing the uh, first thoughts of the rig, but I did forget to look at the adjustable uh, pedal deck here. And that's just that one little screw there uh, that you pull off on each side and sets the uh, angle displacement. So yeah, from zero to 25 degrees, I got it at five right now, uh, but pretty neat. You just unscrew two of those screws, one on each side and that whole deck slides out uh, makes it easy to maintain uh, pull your pedals out uh, quickly and uh, to clean them and, and uh, wool them up and stuff if you need to my situation is it's a pain in the butt either way just because the way I have it here in the corner it's not like I have a big area for me to get around it and with this table kind of in the way uh, you gotta be a little bit of a contortionist to get in here. So, but that certainly makes it way easier than I used to have it. So some aspects of this rig that I want to cover are the important ones. I've seen lots and lots of reviews of different rigs and it took a while to decide which one I wanted. And going back and forth, uh, answering or asking a few questions from Simitech, whether, you know, I thought this rig was going to be right for me or not. Um, one of the concerns is I didn't want to get rid of my DSD button boxes, or at least just just one, to be able to fit my shifter on it and handbrake on there. So they wasn't sure that that could happen. Uh, this is now the Rev 2, I believe, of the shifter mount, because I'll see it on their website as a separate purchase now. Uh, but of course it came with my rig. Uh, so yay me, it came with it. So I I'm glad it definitely is a, an improvement like I showed on the first thoughts I mean it's hard to see here but this thing there you go it's about 3 8 thick uh, to hold your shifter so it's very very sturdy I mean when you bang gears and stuff you don't nothing moves you just you just get the vibration of it, but you actually don't get any movement of the shifter now when I've watched other and I'm just jumping right into this review to the key points of things that I like um, and you know what let me back up just a second so adjustability wise like I pointed out in the uh, uh, the first unboxing is this can slide forward and backwards you can change the pitch of your uh, wheel deck you can change the height every wheel deck. After you get it where you want it, here's these little knobs here uh, to change the height. I have it all the way up. I did wish that it would kind of go a little higher than it does, um, but it's plenty high for a desk to get my wheel up above it and perfectly underneath my monitor. Uh, so it's all good to go. Uh, after you get it secured where you want it, you can tighten it down with these screws that go across uh, to fix it in place, keep it from ever working itself loose so that's good that they thought of that um of course the bottom the Simitech uh brace not only looks sweet lit up and i got it in white just to um project some more light around here but uh you know it's functional as well so keeping the uh, uh everything together uh from side to side i think this rig would make a great rig for adding a full motion seat maybe like a next level uh seat on here because it's built so well uh, and it's so thick that uh, it should be able to handle the forces uh, that you'd get from the uh, a full motion rig 
especially over time, uh, full motion can rattle everything loose. So, uh, but as far as the adjustments, this is considered one of the most adjustable rigs on the market, uh, from what I've read. Uh, and they have other accessories and stuff that are coming with it. This is not uh, endorsed from Symmetech or anything like that. I did not get this for free. So I can pretty much unbiasedly say what I think about it. <laughs> uh, or even if I did get some stuff uh, for free, I would still give my uh, true opinion on it. But anyway, back to the rig. I do have my Fanatec Club Sport v2 uh wheel on there uh with the angled bracket on it uh club sport shifter and handbrake of course and i'm running a little logitech keyboard over there uh, i bought this with the shifter uh mount the right shifter mount and the keyboard accessory i didn't get it with the monitor stand uh because i'm probably gonna I, well what i have here for the monitor stand works just fine and i don't really want the monitor to shake with the rig, uh, especially when I'm probably going to upgrade to a direct drive wheel uh, later this year. Uh, hopefully, when the uh, Fanatec one comes out. Um, anyway, things I noticed about this, getting back to the shifter itself, it doesn't move. So I've seen Next Level Racing, I've seen uh, uh, I've seen them all. The um, GT Omega, the uh, Abutos. All these rigs, uh, Fanatec as well, and, and probably the only ones I, at RC, of course I had an RC, this one replaced an RC RS1, which was, I don't know, about 10 years ago. No, maybe not that long, about five, six, no, maybe six years ago uh, that I replace, uh, that I've had that one. So uh, this one, of course, replaces it miles ahead of that one. The RS1, of course, nowadays is a lot sturdier than the one I have, uh, but you also got to spend a thousand dollars for it and that's just not in my budget um, and most of the time when you start looking at entry-level um, sim rigs they're not built to this quality this is built like a high-end rig <clears throat> something uh, along the lines I would say like uh, what you would get out of a motion rig like sim experience has uh, as far as not quite as thick of tubing and stuff as that, but it doesn't need to be because it's not handling motion. It wasn't designed for motion, but it was designed to handle forces of direct drive wheels, which is what I was interested in. Um, I think the only thing you could get better as far as for the money, and actually it would cost you a little bit more, is to do the channel tubing yourself and build your own custom rig. Uh, out of the box, this is actually pretty sweet the way it is. But I'll crawl into this seat here Oops, excuse me go over the area that you're sitting in so okay third time going back to <laughs> the shifter you can see that it doesn't move and when you when I look at all the other reviews I always see this shifter mount moving see I'm hitting this and this thing's not even moving um, I see the thrust masters on there and they go grab like with the next level racing GT Omega, any of them that I've seen. This thing is, once they move it, it's still moving. Uh, and you, you lose that slack. It doesn't feel real to you. Uh, and here, this one feels great, feels real. So I love that. Um, let me see. So yeah, this one, it feels real, very solid feeling like a real car does. Uh, when you grab a gear and shake it, when you yank on the e-brake uh everything it's it's just very sturdy um words like well built sturdy rock solid um well engineered all come to mind uh, with this rig uh i'm six foot tall and i did notice since i have it to the third placement hole down there i have this rig as far back as i can go and i can't really quite get all the pedals <laughs> completely modulated and working well uh, this far back when the seat's pushed all the way back. So for six foot tall people, it does actually work just fine. Um, uh, and of course this is adjustable as well. Uh, if you wanted it a little bit closer, if you didn't have the button boxes, you, you know, you could, everything can move in closer uh, if you wanted to. Uh, but yeah, plenty of adjustment here for a six foot tall person. 
Uh, I believe you can make it uh, work for someone taller. Uh, and from what I've understand from other others, is they uh, they'll actually make these rails or something longer for you for taller people. I, I saw in someone else's review on it. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in the Fanatec stuff, if it all fits on here, fits here nicely, works with all kind of, you know, the latest Logitech, Fanatec, Thrustmaster uh, setups. But the main thing I wanted to get from this uh, rig is I wanted everything to be solid. Uh, no moving around, no excess movement, not losing my forces uh, when I'm, you know, uh, shifting or I'm driving. I'm not losing them through the chassis and uh everything feels dampened uh this actually feels solid more like a real car when you're shifting it's it's uh it ta it, it takes feels a positive it's a positive shift it's not when you shift forward and the mount that it's on is is moving and so you get over travel it, it just doesn't feel like a toy anymore uh, it feels rock uh, like a rock so i like it like it a lot um the uh pedal deck or the uh i'm sorry the um uh, wheel deck here feels solid you know it's like upgrading your wheel almost uh from uh, say a csr elite to a club sport v2 uh, the extra forces you feel you know if you want to if you want to get extra forces out of your wheel maybe look at your chassis that it's mounted to you know if you're if you're mounted to a uh, TV dinner tray, then you're going to be losing all those forces, right? So it's kind of the same, same kind because the tray is going to be moving all over the place when you're trying to hold it in place. Uh, same thing here. 